Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. For our radio audience tuning in at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, it's tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. You know, we've mentioned to you guys before about the new docu-series featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger called Arnold. You guys can see it on Netflix, one of the top ten TV shows there on Netflix. We're excited to welcome award-winning filmmaker Leslie Tilcott to our program today to talk to us not only about the fascinating life of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but what it's been like for her to capture that and to see the audience response. It really does help you to see the makings of the man when I talk to her about the access she was able to get, but also what she helped you as viewers able to take away from it as well. Leslie, thank you again for the time. Really do appreciate this. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Well, uh, people probably know you already. My favorite project of yours before Arnold, I believe, Leslie, was Waiting for Superman because I'm, uh, education is something that's near and dear to my heart. So I love the fact you've been able to bring attention to all of these different topics. But here in Arnold, you're able to give us a glimpse of a man. And I think if you know, we hear about people having nine lives. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger now, after watching this, seems like he's someone definitely who's lived multiple lives. What was it like for you to bring together in this docuseries? Oh my gosh, that's a that's a great question. I mean, how many lives can one person have, right? You go from this what was an incredibly obscure sport of bodybuilding. You know, you grow up in this humble village in Austria and you think bodybuilding <laughs> is my key out of here <laughs> towards America, right? And not only does he he do that, he he wins 13 international awards and then he goes, mm. Mm, "Yeah, I think I'm going to try acting." <laughs> and then he goes on to do that, and it and it was a rocky start, right? Like, he had a couple of really good roles in the 70s, but it, it didn't really lead anywhere, and then he was waiting for his, his, his role as Conan, only he mm. almost didn't get the part because he had pissed off that producer, um, Dino De Laurentiis, who's really short. When he met him, he goes, why does a little guy like you need such a big desk? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, he's got a brilliant way of sticking his foot in his mouth, but he waited. He waited for the right role, and he had made money in real estate, so he could wait. And then Conan put him on the map, and it's kind of been, you know, no looking back ever since. Yeah, for sure. There was something interesting, and you actually shared it yourself on Twitter, Leslie, and I want to share with our audience because it is a, a quote from the docuseries. It's one I had made a note of, and I see that, that Arnold himself retweeted it as he was um, promoting a chorus, the docuseries, and that was, you can call me anything you want, but don't call me self-made. And that's what I think sometimes can be a conflict for a lot of us, right? We see individuals that seem to come from nowhere with no apparent you know, support. There's nothing in his background that would have said he would have ended up where he was. But he, in such a genuine way, was able to show that he did become who he did because of those who kind of paved the way and were there with him. What was it like for you to see him express that? Well, you know, you've hit on to me what is the essential Arnold. Like, for years, he's always said a combination of the sentence, you know, through my Austrian sense of discipline and hard work and combined with the American sense of opportunity, I fill in the blank, won the world, right? Mm. But the real secret is for me that I think after spending so much time with him is that wherever he goes, he forms a tribe of friends and he tries to help them, but he really listens to them and they help him. So initially it can be a group of bodybuilders that are further along than he is so he can aspire. You know, later it might be a group of actors that are further along for, you know, than he is or a group of good business advisors. But he has so many friends, Cyrus, and he he cultivates his relationships from when he was six years old. You know, we went to Tall Austria, and I met his friend that he's known since he was six years old, and they're still good friends. And that friend wow. ended up being mayor of his village, which is like a couple thousand people, so it's different than Arnold being governor of California. But, you know, the teacher's really proud of both of them because they both succeeded in these unbelievable ways. And so these friendships and these tribes that he formed are really key to his success. 
And I thought it was an interesting parallel to yourself, Leslie, because I, one thing that comes across in this work, but also in some of your other work as well, is the trust that's given to you for the access and for the the candid conversations. What has that been like for you to see the tribe you've been able to build and how that's helped you be able to tell these stories that you've been able to tell? Well, you know what I appreciated when I first met Arnold, I had his attention and respect from the beginning. I didn't have to earn it, you know, like Mm -hmm. you do with some people. But like many extremely famous people, he has these sayings. And he has these talking points, and him more than other, you know, whether it's I'll be back or do it, do it now, <laughs> you know, he has those catchphrases. <laughs> and the reality is he says those when there are no cameras around. He says it to his friends. Mm. He talks to his animals that way. But wow. the, the, we had loads of FaceTime conversations. Sometimes I would go over to his office or to his house just to talk about, okay, you know, next time we meet, you know, we're going to talk about the, the wedding. I would never tell him the questions but I would tell him that the subject because he's done so many things. I wanted him to be tuned in. And from the very Mm. beginning, um, he and the executive producer, Alan Hughes, and I said to him, there can't be any subject that's off the table in order for us to do this. You know, there's, there's a genre of celebrity documentaries now, but he didn't produce this. You know, we went, we went to him and we got access, but we were clearly making a film about him and we're like, we have to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and, you know, the unbelievable. And, and he agreed. And, you know, some mm-hmm. talking about some of those topics, you know, it was not his favorite choice. You know, he, he, he doesn't want to talk about some of them because they hurt some you know, right. family and people that are close to him, but, but right. he really goes there in the series. Yeah, and I'm not going to spend much time on that here, uh, Leslie, but I do want to mention one thing, though, about especially in the third part of the series, if you don't mind, and that is there is the realization, right, of one's own role, not only, of course, you know, in his career, but also in life. What was that like for you as a takeaway to kind of take, that he was someone who could take responsibility and ownership of his decisions, good and otherwise? You know, a lot of... um a lot of people don't apologize, right? They just don't. They just don't do it. They think it's a waste of time to to, to wallow in that. And um, while I'm not going to say he's the most introspective person in the world, <laughs> he has thought a lot about. I mean, he really he really is goal oriented 24 seven. You know, from the mm-hmm. moment he wakes up in the morning, more, more so than he literally. I kid you not, works harder than anyone I've ever met. And I've met a lot of successful, hardworking people. But he he knows that for as many, you know, wonderful things he's famous for, whether it's bodybuilding or twins or Terminator or whatever it is, he knows his personal failures will all, always be out there. And gotcha. I think that's something interesting to look at as a filmmaker, looking at those layers and showing those layers in a, in a series. Um, like I hope I did, um, I, I think that's that's fascinating for people. Hmm. We we'll definitely invite our audience to watch it again. Arnold on Netflix. We've been speaking with award-winning filmmaker Leslie Chilcott. Leslie, thank you again. Congratulations on this. So appreciate this time with you, and I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. I hope that happens. Thank you so much. Okay, more than welcome. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Thank you, as always. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. And let's go make today amazing. Take care. <laughs>